I V M. Hello and welcome to Simplified, the show where we try to make things simpler mostly. And today we have a very special guest uh, to talk to. We we are lacking Naren, but we have a very special guest to talk to in uh, his place to lend uh, sagacity, who is uh, Mr. Zen Memon. Zen is the founder of Memesis Labs and more famously, the creator of Shasan, the political strategy board game that is uh, really taking India and the world by storm. So yeah, Zen, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's, this is going to be fun. Yeah, so so, <laughs> so we are nearing two fifty episodes of Simplified, but this is the first episode of Zane and the Uns. Insane, Zane and the Uns. Insane. What is it? Insane. <laughs> Ins- okay. Uh, well, nice. Shikip, you didn't introduce the hosts, <laughs> by the way. Yes, uh, as we do often. So Zane, you, I don't know how much of Simplified you have heard, but sometimes uh, we we leave our host introduction to sometimes any part of the episode. So it's sometimes in the middle of the episode where we are like, oh, by the way, Chuck is talking now, so is speaking. So <laughs> yeah. our podcast is quite unstructured that way. Yet moderate, yet very moderate. moderate. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I'm Sri Kip. Uh, I'm Chuck, and, and I'm Tony. Yes. Speaking of unconventional openings, I guess board games is something that we are all used to. Oh yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> nice. Very smooth. Very smooth segue. And uh, it's all planned. Uh, what yeah. Is so like? so Zen is uh, most famously. I mean, Zen is a man who has who has many introductions you can begin with. Uh, he is uh, most famously the creator, one of the creators of uh, Shasan, the political strategy board game that pretty much has taken India and the world what? by storm in, in a big way. Also, you are a co-founder of Memesis Labs, uh, which is responsible for uh, one of the best documentaries I personally have seen and one of the best documentaries, uh, political documentaries from, come from India, which is An Insignificant Man and many other, many, many other uh, ventures. So in that space, to just to begin on that, uh, Zen, can you tell a bit about your background and how you got into any any of the space? So you create a lot of different types of content, right? There's board games, there's a documentary, there's a TV show uh, in OK Computer, uh, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that comes from everywhere. So you want to talk about where it began and uh, how, your, how you started off? Sure. So I, I wanted to create media ever since I was very, very young. Um, I'm also introverted, so I knew I didn't want to be in front of the camera. I'm more of the person who makes things happen kind of person. And I I had the the good pleasure of finding a tribe, finding the privilege of finding people who were like-minded, who who liked the things I like, and also were disliked the things that we uh, that we were forced to consume by by by, by uh, the industry around us. And one day we just decided, hey, if we really want to create media that we are proud of. Uh, we'll have to start contributing to the ecosystem more, more actively. And six of us got together and we co-founded Memesis. Uh, this was 2015. Uh, and I had been friends with them for three, four years before that, at least. And uh, soon people started joining us, uh, our collaborators increased, and now we are 30 odd people creating a bunch of content, ranging from everything from, from films to games, to television shows, to virtual reality, augmented reality. We don't believe in prescribing a medium to our to our creators simply because we don't know what we don't feel that one medium is better than the others. Each medium has their own strengths and weaknesses. And also we're living in a transition period in media history where a lot is changing very, very rapidly. Uh, so we just ask our creators to tell the story that they want to tell the most in the best possible way they can. We pride ourselves in the quality of our products. And uh, that's that's exactly what we want. And one question I ask all my creators is, if can someone else make this? Or is someone else making this? If they are, let's not make it. It's already done. Let's yeah. do something that other people are not doing. So that's really interesting what you said. And while while definitely it is this, what is the best way you can tell a story aspect of content creation, what really seems to have taken off when it comes to Memesis in some way is that there is, you are kind of like, if I can frame it this way, discovering appetites that we did not mm-hmm. know existed with, especially an Indian populace. I mean, of course, we are finding out like board games. I mean, board games have, have always been like a big niche in an external market. Board games in India has just been like, I mean, board games means immediately the average Indian is Scrabble, Monopoly, uh, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, and not just any board game, but a board game that is, that is in a space that is both controversial and 
often for a mass indian uninteresting you know politics is something that they don't really want yeah. to venture into so how what what was the process of trying to kind of create a game that is both appealing is a game it's fun yet is something that's provocative and like really te- test you to think maybe you can just give a small brief about shasan i i come from a place of having played it so maybe you can give a small brief about it sure. so shasan is a political strategy board game that we created uh, we started creating 2019 uh, and uh, has been in the market for for a year now it's a game where each player is a politician in the middle of election campaign uh, they're building the ideology influencing voters hatching conspiracies dodging headlines in an attempt to become the most successful politician at the end of the game the game is very very high conflict and and involves the player taking a, a political or social stance at the start of every turn so it really puts people into the uncomfortable questions that we dodge at our dinner tables and it's very interesting that you say that that we have dabbled in so many things and we are looking at, at appetites that have been you know addressed yet that yeah. because that's exactly where we are right now as a company we we believe what we have done right so far are the pilot projects we have opened gates we have created markets where we didn't where we felt markets should have been but weren't and that started before memesis was a formal entity with ship of theseus we uh, we dabbled with uh, and create and created and paved roads for for independent cinema for the thinking person cinema uh, with which which again doesn't talk down to the audience in any way then with an insignificant man we started we really took political questions head on with virtual reality we dabbled in new formats of media and with board games especially with with shasan we are really seeing how we can push the boundaries of conversation and interaction the board game vertical the board game subsidiary within nemesis is interestingly called gatfly which basically yeah. means it, it's a it's a livestock fly but it basically means a person who annoys, annoys or criticizes others in order to provoke them into action so that wow. can give you a sense of of the brand ethos uh, we don't want to be the people who just who make you a slayer dragon or or a builder farm other people are doing that we really want you to create to create interactions between players that that put them in uncomfortable spots and if you can create uncomfortable spots and safe spaces simultaneously that's a great space for conversation basically take the family mm-hmm. conflict from the reality that you're facing mm-hmm. to the artificiality of the board game so you re- retain the same intensity but you don't have to like face oh, the personal yeah. consequences <laughs> for it you so always have a cop out you know you always have a yeah. cop out you always like i said that for the game i don't really believe it because yeah. <laughs> yeah. all of us have stopped having political conversations with the people we love the most yeah 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 that's true and that's what helped me on that exactly uh, that that point where because the game forces you like uh, so the just just to give a bit of background on the game there's four ideologues or four types of leaders there's a there's a charismatic leader there is a an idealist there's a supremo who's like pretty, pretty, very right wing and then there is uh, who's the, the fourth one the capitalist yes the capitalist of course how do i forget yeah <laughs> so uh, so the thing is in the game based on whatever the cards and situations are like you get pushed to situations and yeah. the the ideology cards like force you to answer questions like i have a cousin who is one, one of the most vocal people about women's right who who supported <laughs> victim blaming in the game right a victim blaming of of some sort in the game and uh, post and and finally like the game ended and the most incredible part of the game was the first the very first game that we played ended in a tie between my wife and my cousin sister yeah. now they had to and there is a tie breaker situation that's a pdf and this is one of the most incredible things i've experienced in a board game by the way there is a pdf that resolves tie breakers which basically says that if you've got equal number of voters your tie will be resolved based on where you and on a privilege score card how much privilege you have wow and i kid you not because they were both female they were both in from like upper class families with both parents and all that stuff the tie got resolved on the fact that my wife is fairer than my cousin wow oh, okay right so and and that that became and when we were thinking about it, like my wife at the end of it like literally said i feel dirty at the end of this <laughs> game right and that itself that uh, ability to provoke a sense uh, a feeling of like a deep feeling of some sort by just yeah. playing what is called a game for entertainment yeah. was something that really blew my mind on that and pdf here stands for public display of fury <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, so wow the other part that i was coming from on this and 
just based on that whole thing about evoking deep feelings i also feel that there is um so i i'm also a gamer and as a gamer like i've been recently like replaying a game called red dead redemption red dead rdr2 red dead redemption 2 and uh, that game also kind of like there are two things one is when i was playing the game so that game you're playing basically a bandit and one of those situations is you're playing as a debt collector mm. and going beating up people who are like in real bad situations and the game compels you to be a bad guy <laughs> right so you're yeah. feeling horrible when you're doing these things and when that happened and that deep feeling that came got me reading and thinking about something that i had studied about that is what art does right as art's function yeah. is to provoke a certain feeling and then that got me into a thing about games as art yeah and there is a huge stream of thinking over there so but fr- slight slight difference there is that uh, when you're playing against a computer it's easier to become evil right like yeah. we've all played gta and enjoyed it just like running over people so we won't do it in real life and yeah. i think the difference is that political conversations have become really really awkward even with like your close family Uh, or like you know friends you've grown up with and when you're playing board games in close proximity it's like you know i know what your sort of uh, you know projected ideology mm-hmm, is but yeah. now you're suddenly speaking something completely different yeah, so, that dynamic is yeah is, i mean it's also the, is that and bringing your personal values to the table right i mean yeah. when you're playing gta you don't necessarily go and yeah. run over people in you assume life, a character yeah, you yeah. assume a character but here your assumed character and your real character are kind of like that word again conflict i think yeah and uh, overlapping. you're a troublemaker sen you're a troublemaker <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know that's why we made a board game i wanted people to look each other in the eye i didn't want it to be right. an app game where you can just yeah. minimize the app or look away right. i really want people to look each other in the eye and say, Yeah, I don't believe in women's rights. <laughs> um, that's fantastic. That's an Instagrammable moment, yeah. right there. <laughs> and and that's But, what Shasan really allows you to do. Yeah. Uh, and games have been doing that. The power of interactivity yeah. in games is, is so profound. Like there's a game called Papers Please, uh, which is about immigration, and you are an immigration agent, allowing or disallowing people into your country. Wow, wow, right. Yeah. And the game really makes you feel that's happening. There's another beautiful game. It's an art piece of a game, and it comes with a spoiler. So jump ahead one minute if you don't want to know what the game is about, or a spoiler. <laughs> it's a game called Train by Brenda Romero, and it's a game about efficiency. It's a game about fitting the most number of people on a train. Right. As the game progresses, uh, the game reveals more and more details of what you are doing to you. With the final reveal being that uh, the story is happening in Nazi Germany, and the train is on the way to Auschwitz. Oh, oh man <laughs> and it talks about the small steps that cumulatively create great evil wow yeah that's incredible though let's go more fundamental into this whole process then how mm-hmm. does one go about so you have an idea you want to make a game where do you start mm-hmm. how does one start making a game so so there are two major schools of thought i'm going to talk about the one i don't normally do and then arrive at the one i use one is just you you follow the fun and you look at mechanics or dynamics within the game which you which you find fun the most common being point and click all a first person shooter games you point at something you click mm. the one who does it faster wins and then yeah. you add more and more layers so you take something that is a, a a dexterity skill that is that is innately fun and then you create maps and powers and uh, rules and round systems around it uh yeah. that's how most triple a games are made and then there's a story about world war 2 slapped on you know sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> sometimes that has to get old yeah. na like yeah. there is a time when world war 2 ceases being yeah. uh, like the the backdrop for every yeah. so okay, yeah. game yeah we are almost at 3 fine we'll have we'll have talking about these fps games most fps fps games so and bringing back what you were talking about being centrists earlier yeah. most fps yeah. games are fundamentally right wing games Very much so. Okay. At the end, it's 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 you solve a problem by picking up a gun. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's it's a very simplistic way of solving, solving a problem, yeah. right? Like the simplest ways is a convention. That's why World War Two is also probably very popular because it's the most it's the last big conventional war where there was a simple solution to a problem. You killed the bad guy, and that's when it ended. Yeah. Again, again, but. World War Two also had some very very interesting qualities, and people don't talk about yeah. those. For example, yeah, uh, exactly. For example, for the longest time, the U.S. did not land on mainland uh, Europe. Mm. They were busy in the campaign, what they call the campaign for North Africa. Mm, yeah, 
Yes. Uh, simultaneously, if you look at World War II, you have things happening in Singapore that are very, very interesting. You have uh, Bose allying with uh, the Axis powers yeah. to free prisoners of war captured by the Allied powers who are oppressing us. <laughs> and then oh, using oh. those armies to fight the Allied powers who are also basically, who are basically indulging in slavery and genocide the same way the Nazis were. Yeah. The oh, Bengal oh. famine was man-made. Yeah, 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 of course. That's and, the and, so. I when mean, you want to talk about World, World War Two, there's so many interesting dynamics, so many interesting interactions, so many, yeah. so many variables that you can touch upon that are more yeah. interesting than just I saw enemy, I shoot enemy. Yeah, so that's where the <laughs> like you like you were saying the FPS games are all about that, where you see enemy, you shoot enemy, enemy die, you win. Right. Yes. <laughs> that that is the narrative that most of these games follow. Yeah, the most like what I call like what Arnon calls it, all these stories can exist in the animal kingdom. If, yeah. if our stories can exist in the Animal Kingdom, why not just make them Nat Geo documentaries? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how we approach stories is, okay, we understand that game is an interaction between multiple forces that are working, are working sometimes with each other or against each other to meet an objective. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, these interactions can be very, very interesting and very, very complex. So we start by talking about what these interactions are. Like there's a game that uh, is being built by uh, by Naomi Shah right now with an with an studio, which is t- which talks about the the news cycle and how news is created, and players can choose to create stick to the facts and create news uh, and earn earn the trust of the people, or they can choose to step away from uh, what is fact and move towards a more profitable venture. Oh wow. wow! This this is this has this is the yeah. game after my own heart. So I'm a huge newsroom fan mm-hmm. uh, by Aaron Sorkin. That 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 is this is what like really gets my cog. I'm waiting for this game whenever it's out. <laughs> but anyway, coming and cycling back, and we've as usual detoured a bit. But cycling back to that whole thing, the you were talking about the two ideologies of yeah. how game construction exactly. is begin. One is the FPS, and, and then the there's second, the second one, and which is basically take take multiple players, multiple uh, actors in a particular interaction. Map out their stakes. What does each player want? What does each character in the story want? And then what we do is we create a, a map of nodes. How each node influences every other node. And we take the biggest nodes. For example, in Shasan, the biggest nodes were, were voters, were political ideologies, were and the four resources, which is funds, media, clout on the streets, and trust of the people. Mm-hmm. And you start creating interaction between these nodes in an attempt to tell a story or translate an epiphany or an idea. But, and sometimes what happens in these games, if you map, do the mapping really well, the epiphany at the end is something that the, that the creator had not intended. Oh, wow. Because Mm. you, what you're doing is, is simplifying and making the engine bare. Yeah. uh, And creating interactions that are true to life, not exactly perfect, but true to life. And players interact with each other to to maximize their gains. Right. So games, unlike films, do two things. One, the narrative is co-created by the player and the game designer. It's not a one-way street. Uh, you will. I have seen people do the most, uh, the most fantastic things on Shasan, and, my, and it directly translates to a story that happened in real politics. Like I have seen the the 2019 Maharashtra elections play out on the game board. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> Similarly, what the experience you had in your first playthrough, which is all things being equal in a and again, the privilege tracker is not something we we prescribe. It is something that it is it is what we believe is a representation of the world that yeah. we live in and will change as as time goes on. And hopefully, one day we'll delete that privilege tracker. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I see that. Yeah, so yeah, you're you're being yeah. an idealist now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it basically talks about how. All things being equal, of these two people, one person might become a prime minister just because of the color of their skin. Right, yeah. Or uh, not because they're Italian. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but uh, I think... Uh, and the second thing even, you can do, uh, which I wanted to talk about, the first thing I said, they, they co-create the story. Games are the only thing that punish you for not being good at the format. There's no movie that pauses if you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's great, yeah. One uh, fascinating aspect of this is while, I mean, we see the finished product uh, after you you know create, but most importantly, what do you delete from a board game once you've got wow. the concept? And, yeah, that's know, a great question. Yeah. 
Oh, so, so much. I, the map that you are seeing of Shasan right now is, if I'm not wrong, at least the 19th draft of the map. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh, shit. What we end up doing is we play test aggressively. We play test a lot. Uh, which basically means you make the game and you throw it out in the wild and then you wait for your creation to get clubbered. <laughs> Always a fun, yeah, fun yeah. exercise. <laughs> because if there's a system, there's a person who will exploit it. Yeah. <laughs> and if a game has a path of least resistance or a best way of doing it or what is called in gaming a meta, then everyone's going to follow the meta. Yeah. yeah. In multiplayer games, it's it's easier to break metas because, uh, especially in symmetrical multiplayer games, because people are going to pull each other down. In Shasin, when you're in the lead, other people will try and slow you down. Yeah. There is a very strong social element to it. But what we do is we make the core engine. We don't wait for graphic design, not, none of that. It's It scribbles on a piece of paper. We get our friends, we get our friends or friends to come over and just try it out. We promise them coffee and uh, coffee, beer and chips. And they try out our game. Sometimes it's worth their time. Sometimes they just get up and leave. The times it's worth their times, we make notes. The times they get up and leave, we make more notes. Uh, <laughs> because that's... And we start looking at moments. Like in a film, we'll start looking at the tempo of the game. What is it that slowed people down? What did people enjoy? When did people feel powerful? When did people feel like they were backed into a corner? When did they have meaningful choices? Choices that actually want, want the the obvious best possible move, but they had two very compelling choices and they had to pick one. And we note those down, we try and maximize those moments and everything else we delete. That's like, incredible, yeah. From, from the first hundred play tests, I'm, my team has data of how many times the phone was picked up by players. <laughs> uh, that That's an incredible data point. And mm-hmm. also, I mean, it's also, I think also comes down to, because I, uh, when we were playing the game, my, my thought was, when when we were like looking at, okay, which ideologue do I want to go towards and stuff like that. All, uh, I mean, the very best games don't have that, but most, a lot of the board games that I have played, there are certain, I mean, especially if they're not beaut, if they're not perfectly designed, they can be mm-hmm. well designed, but if they're not perfectly designed, there will be, like you said, the path of least resistance, one area will be very OP, will be overpowered, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So when you have that particular thing, so I still haven't played Shasin enough to discover that. Mm-hmm. From your perspective, is there a space that you can go which which is very OP that you have discovered? Are or, you asking for a cheat code just because yeah, your I, family <laughs> doesn't listen to Simplified? Hey man, <laughs> this is how I test. <laughs> but no, I mean no. But in the, I mean you don't need to tell it to me. But uh, in the in the process of you going through that, is that is that something you want you strive Engine diligently work, yeah. to eliminate, or do you actually leave it in as part of the imperfections? Because again, being OP exists in the real world. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's the question then. Uh, does it like, do you remove it or do you keep it in? Like for the players to discover. So you create, you create some, some moments where, where there are power spikes. So yeah. in Shasin, if you have two level five powers at the end of the game, basically that's out of 10 turns. If you have answered only in two ideologues and unlock their most powerful powers, you will be in a much better off place as someone else who has a three, 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 four split as opposed to a five, five. Yeah, uh, you will not have those major powers. One trick that my team internally jokes about uh, is never take the lead in the start of the game. <laughs> you will paint a target on your back. Yeah, it's stay second, second strongest till the end of the game, and end the game on your terms. If you're going to take the lead and gloat about it in a game with high interaction like Shasin, people are going to pull you down to fourth place. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, I, I've seen that especially. It's it's somehow actually even relevant in uh, the normal uh, Twitch reaction games, which is mm-hmm. when you play mm-hmm. NFS, yeah. you draft behind the leader mm-hmm. yeah. and then you pull ahead. How yeah. much yeah. of this, uh, what you said right now, Zain, how much of that is analogous to actual politics? I'm sure you had some of these realizations. I'm sure some of what you did was based on actual politics and you maybe you discovered theories as you created the game and saw how people like Sriket were reacting to the game and probably came out of their own theories. Have you seen that play out for yourself, for the players? Do you think your players like Sriket, like do you think like you yourself have become more quote-unquote politically aware uh, about how the system is gamed and <laughs> literally gamed? No, I, and, and on that, and Chuck raised a great point, I just make a addendum to it where is this a game and have you seen this in your playtesting and the times that you have observed that 
people are there is an education component to the game that people are now learning more about through either the ideologue cards or just generally becoming more interested in getting more aware about the political situation a couple of things one let's talk about how the game happened we made this mm-hmm. film called an, an insignificant man kushbu ranka and vinay shukla co directed it i had the privilege of being a, a creative producer on the film and and helping them in whatever way, little way i could but when the film ended and the film is basically tracks the so just on the side the an yeah. insignificant man is about the it's the story of the aam aadmi party's rise to power yes yeah it's in, in the very birth, basic yeah and the rise of of the ap from 2012 to the first election that they won yeah after which yeah, they, quit, they quit and over there it wasn't it wasn't made from news footage it was there are no talking heads in the film the film is basically khushbu when they and their team spending years following different political parties around yeah, everything it's a real fly on the wall documentary yeah. yeah so you see them inside a uh, closed door meeting you see them in rallies you you watch the entire party come to life you watch yogendra yadav arvind kejriwal manish sodia everyone and we felt that the conversation around the film wasn't over we felt that uh, there's great insight that we have gather, gathered through making the film through experiences of political theorists that were on the team uh, and our own understanding of uh, game theory in, in indian politics now how do i get that across and this comes back to a point i made earlier we were tasked with telling the story again and telling it in a much in in a much more interesting way to which i responded that if you really want people to feel uh, to uh, to understand politics make them feel like politicians let's make a game about it wow. and that's how shasan was born and then much later we launched a game called azadi which ships later this year and again azadi pushes the envelope on what games can do azadi is not about defeating each other it's about working together and defeating the british or the or the imperial powers in your country and if you do do that if you manage to work together and defeat uh, the imperial powers there is a possibility of uh, of there being a free nation and and one of you will become prime minister so the yeah, game so it's in the first yeah. act makes you cooperate and second half tells you that you are going to fight <laughs> which completely influences how you play the first half because you're not really cooperating yeah. the semi cooperative yeah. game Yeah. Uh, no, so it's like uh, you cooperate to a point, and then you suddenly compete. Uh, uh, like at one random point in the game is where you begin competing. Yeah. And it's about who pulls the trigger first. You're like, yeah. Okay, if I mm. betray the person first before they betray me, that's better, right? And that's that's a downward spiral of yeah. of lack of trust. And that's exactly what happened in a lot of uh, revolutions. There was la- yeah. great distrust between the people, while simultaneously great great cooperation. A lot of people when they play shasin, they they Midway through the game, they look up and say, "You know, I'm not answering questions about on based on what I believe. Uh, I'm just answering <laughs> to get the coins." And and at that point, they go, "Oh, that's how it works." <laughs> and, it really, <laughs> and and basically, it lays bare the idea of how how politicians are also maximizing resources and opportunities. Yeah, and it's and all then, incentives led. Basically. Yeah, and. If if one politician was corrupt, we could have blamed them, saying, "Hey, this one person is crooked." But people have been have been hating on politicians ever since democracy existed. Yeah. So perhaps there is a flaw in the system that needs to be repaired, and perhaps the system incentivizes a certain kind of behavior. Yeah. And that's what Shasin is trying to talk about. It's trying to talk about these interactions. A lot of the epiphanies are people writing to me saying, uh, people writing to with me with epiphanies about the game, and also saying that I almost broke up with my partner. Uh, wow, the range, is, the range is quite wide. <laughs> um, wow, in that space, and so one thing what which happened with me. So I I played a lot of board games, and when I was trying to understand the game, and so does my so all of the people that I was playing with have played some level of like adult board games before, mm-hmm. and so when we were just trying to understand the rules, like the moment when we saw the resources and stuff, we were like, "Huh, katan, fire, wood, sheep, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff." Like we got the nobody concept. wants sheep, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh yeah, that too. But yeah, so that concept was pretty clear. What I'm curious to understand, and you must have encountered this in your playtesting, is, I mean, the majority of adults still in India, are, board games are what they played: Scrabble, Pictionary, or Ludo, or Ludo, yeah, Ludo, <laughs> Pictionary, not so much chess, stuff like that. I mean, how have you seen people who are completely board game agnostic mm-hmm. take to a game that is as complex? Not in not in gameplay mechanics, probably, but in in like the ideology and stuff, yeah. in the mental faculties. Commit to a game like Shasan. Uh, there is there is a decent amount of resistance before the first game. 
the how to play video, the rule book, the number of interactions seems a little daunting. But uh, in our experience, once someone's had their first taste, and I'm going to sound like a drug dealer over here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they keep coming back for more. Uh, for a lot of people, especially in India, Shasan is their first uh, modern board game. Right. The perception that children play board games, adults don't do that anymore, is changing, and people want things to do. Uh, there is what I call screen fatigue, uh, and people want to just sit around and do something that is that is interesting, that's intriguing, or doesn't involve a screen. So for a lot of people, Shasin is daunting at first, but also they are gateway drug into into modern board games. And after after they play three rounds, they're like, oh, the systems make sense, and that's also because the story and the actions are congruent. When you do something like, oh yeah, which possibly means I can also do this. And so suddenly in the third round, you are role playing a politician and the game doesn't need to be taught anymore. Now there are a bunch of other games that we are making, some which make, sh- which are easier than Shasin and some like Azadi, which makes Shasin look like, like Ludo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so uh, on that note, let's take a bit of a break and we'll be back on the other side, still speaking to Zen. Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market and sell to consumers will evolve? Or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from. Welcome back to Simplified. We are speaking to Zen Memon, the co-founder of Memesis Labs and the creator of Shasin, the political strategy board game. So, uh, <laughs> Zen, you you mentioned that uh, you know you don't box your creators into something, or actually you sort of set them free to say create something no one's done before. Mm-hmm. And equally with the audience, you're giving them something they've never seen before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how do you actually go about getting people to, you know, try or buy your product? Sorry, a uh, typical like marketer here. Marketer, yeah. Just wondering so, what your process is. Uh, Shasin's primary audience for the longest time uh, hasn't been Indians. It has it, it has been North America, then Europe, and then India. India is our third largest market right now. And we went out, There's the audience in the US is far more attuned or clued into tabletop games as a medium. I can just write four lines about the game and they'll know how it works because they have that experience. So we we started with them. We started by selling the game to them, monetizing that, while simultaneously having both offline and online events talking about the game. We very strongly believe, and this is since Ship of Thesis, in involving our audiences in some part of the creation or distribution process. Ship of Thesis had, a, we convinced UTV to basically run a poll and this is early internet, early early Facebook, 2012 uh, Facebook, to run a poll of how many people wanted to watch Ship of Thesis in tier two cities, because it was a risk to release there, being a niche film. By the end, the poll was so successful that the film released successfully in 31 cities. And in Significant Man, we had a crowdfunding model. We also, we had a theater on demand model, where you could book an entire screening in any PVR screen anywhere in the country, and then resell those tickets. So wow. you could become the distributor of the film, uh, and incredible. we really involved people in the in the process. We after the film was done, we showed it to our crowdfunding partners first before we went out to the audiences, took their feedback on board, made really made them champions of the film. Same similarly with Shasin, we had four and a half thousand people crowdfund the game, wow. uh, and these people paid upfront for a game that would reach them a year later. Simultaneously, we have a lot of tools that we allow that that allow people to really own the game. There's an entire website that allows you to create your own question decks for Shasin. So if you are in Eastern Europe and there is no Shasin is American politics or Indian politics and and you don't have any you don't feel you don't feel that it speaks to you, you can just go online, take a few hours out and create a Eastern Europe deck for the game, which yeah. is available free of cost. So we really try to first not talk down to our audience. We don't try to second, second guess our audience. And I believe I believe you guys, everyone listening to this podcast and a lot of people in India are sick and tired of, of producers talking down or second guessing what they want. 
and we we try not to do that we try to treat them with as much respect as we can and we involve them very actively in the in the creation process shasan was just being play tested for 9 months before launch we went to colleges and schools and uh, cafes and uh, focus groups all over the country we spent time with players we played the game we recorded them uh, and we used that footage as our marketing collateral so wow. people want <laughs> want believing uh, want just seeing one person talk to the camera and say hey i made a fun game they were watching hundreds of people all over the country have a blast while playing the game mm-hmm. yeah and and speaking of that marketing collateral one thing that i did notice which is i mean honestly i mean i not that i've seen any uh, gaming content come from india in any significant way but one thing that you guys are doing which is almost on par with uh, stuff that's releasing uh, in the west is the marketing collateral that you talked about like the stuff so one thing that shasan has is it's got this incredibly short trailer which is like it's like a mini movie in itself yeah. and then it's got like I, I, I what i particularly like were a lot of those other mini pieces of content like there's that recipe video which is like how do you kind of create a democracy and stuff like that so the collateral is beautifully produced and again cl- mm. con- considering that their co- uh, uh, content studio as such uh, is is, pa- is part of their core competency but what is happening out west is the games it's not just that you release a game people play it they like it they yeah. play you build the hype around it like if there is a game that's going to get released there is like a trailer launch now yeah. and there's like a huge amount of hype that goes beyond it so even for shasan azadi right now there's like this this entire like uh, beautiful tear st- tear stained face <laughs> of a monologue that's there and all that kind of stuff so in that 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 approach for marketing collateral is it that are you seeing is it is it just to kind of like uh, kind of build the hype or sustain the hype or is it is that the uh, fire starter so to speak so shasan is the convenient starter for a lot of our board games but again i don't believe that films are worse or better than than games or any other medium which medium has their own strength uh, yeah i can't do with house of cards what i can do with shasan <laughs> which makes you feel like a politician yeah. so when we market anything we market anything in the best possible way we can and i have the privilege like you said of having great filmmakers around me so georgi palfi uh, who who made a kan winning film was visiting us in goa and played the game and loved it and said how can i help and me being right. the shameless person i am said can you make a film for me about for it he said right. cool he lives in he lives in budapest great world war 2 bunkers a uh, great actor as <laughs> friends fantastic uh, and he went out and he shot this uh, over the top a cinematic piece for Shasan's launch similarly for azadi i really wanted to the conversation about freedom struggles uh, which is normally very very skewed in the in the gaming world needed to be repaired so we said let's go all out and create a cinematic piece that really talks about how we feel about it uh, and we we used the all the skills we have which is writing and cinema to to tell that story and games are right now the largest growing entertainment market in the world uh, board games alone are worth the, the estimates are that the market is a 20 billion dollar market and gaming on the whole is bigger than than film and television combined oh, wow yeah uh, it's crazy i remember, I remember last time i was traveling i was in la in la in hollywood most of the holdings i saw were game launches what call of duty and red dead redemption 2 that launch yeah. the biggest launch one of the biggest launches of last year was cyberpunk it it, uh, it yeah, bombed yeah. but big launch yeah that's amazing though and but the other factor that i did see i mean one thing that i did not expect which i ran into in the credits of the in, uh, instruction booklet at the end is that you have like kunal kamra and ramit mahajan as your consultants <laughs> on the <laughs> game as well <laughs> it's a very simple question what i'm curious about is what part were they resp- were they helping out with the ideologue cards or what what was their role as such so kunal kamra and ramit varma ramit varma runs this and uh, uh, runs this uh, uh, page uh, yes being you may right and ramit's yeah. a very close friend he's worked with us uh, kunal's also a very good friend and they were they really helped us uh, get the word out initially No, and not as a paid influence marketing by really talking about the game because they liked it. They made videos on their Instagram pages. They hosted game nights with their friends. They wow. and I think there's there are two cards in the game that are inspired from them. There is one about a rabble rousing <laughs> person who who trolls internet trolls, which is Ramit. And then there is a there is a conspiracy card called a journalist or a coward, which is basically uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. Uh, 
Uh, no, basically, yeah. Made, no, Arnab. Uh, yeah, Arnab yeah. on the plane. You made a journalist on the plane and confronted oh. them. The card says ah, that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's directly inspired by by actions that they have taken. But uh, again, Ramit, Kunal, and a lot of other people in the country are really the people at News Laundry, Sandeep Bhatia. They are all really creating, mm. making political content fun, and that's the need of the hour. We want people to we want to get. Why is it that we know so much about American politics? Because John Oliver, Hasan yeah. Minaj, uh, Trevor Noah do such a good job making politics funny and relevant. Yeah. it's not a drab news reader anymore and the the new generation of political creators in india are doing just that and that goes across even to poetry we have poets like uh, uh like navin chore uh, who is also collaborated with us make, doing great decent poetry and one of the inspirations of uh, of one event within azadi i think it's a close knit community of people like creating creating political content and uh, helping each other out uh, i help out anand patwar din when i can with tech support and uh, ramit and uh, kunal helped me out in how to make political content sexy <laughs> actually it's interesting you uh, brought the conversation back to this is something i actually wanted to save for the end it is uh, kind of related to something you spoke about a while back um which is when the idea for shasan really came about you wanted to extend the idea of uh, from the documentary did you ever consider and now this is a fairly high intellectual level right intellectual involvement everything right you're talking about this podcast no i'm talking about yeah. <laughs> 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 just like confused for him we still want to simplify yeah we are centrists remember yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no the, uh, did you ever consider and this might be the wrong word to use do you did you ever consider making dumb down content because if you were if the idea was to get say to use your words to get people to have those uncomfortable conversations at dinner tables did you consider making something like for example a reality show which might be easier for people to consume and just have those conversations in their head or with the family rather than discover it through a high involvement board game or something like that is uh- Or dumb down conversations like yeah. simplified. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, was that something that ever crossed your mind? Because I'd say insignificant man was already at this level. Now you took it to another level altogether, which is great for those who enjoy that. But is that something you ever considered or might consider? The temptation is always there, but I keep reminding myself that other people are doing that, and perhaps hmm. that is not my strongest suit. Fair enough. I wouldn't call them lesser skill sets. I would call them different skill sets. Like I am sure that. Anand, who's made Ship of Thieves and Tumbard, won't be the best creator for reels. It's a different medium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, similarly, I don't know if I can do that, but I also don't want to. Uh, sure. Simply because uh, every choice that we have in our life, that we have taken the modern world, be it uh, be it which what to study, who to vote for, who your mating partner should be. uh how you should uh how you should behave with people you don't agree with a very very yeah. complex uh, decisions involving a uh, hundreds of variables if not more hmm. and we really need to walk away from the temptation of trying to simplify everything hmm. our brain <laughs> can and should be trained to being able to be able, able to compute hundreds of variables and make a educated uh, assessment of the, hmm. of the situation and like any muscle your brain has to be trained to do that hmm. and if we keep saying that people want it easy and firstly that's how do you know that for sure uh, we really it's like us uh, uh, keeping a kid in the second grade for 8 years and saying they want to be in the in the in, in, yeah. in the second grade for 8 years and saying they want to be in the second grade and then making them sure for the for the 10th grade board exam and saying see they failed yeah Yeah. Uh, I have actually a follow up question to this yeah which is fits in yeah. perfectly with what actually, yeah, but you uh, were saying something yeah so, sorry but i have and in the defense of simplified or uh, this kind of stuff i i just have a counterpoint it's not a this thing i have a counterpoint to that where while it is you're right absolutely where you're dumbing stuff down and spoon feeding it to people when people are capable of higher intellectual capabilities is a is is a very right argument what i will come from is uh, the the other argument which i have uh, which i have known for so i i am a i have been a wikipedia administrator for 15 years and the w- one line that you always say about wikipedia is that wikipedia should be your first page of research not the last page of your research right hmm. it's where you start learning about things and then you move on to get depth yeah. right and mm-hmm. in that space that's what i feel like while unfortunately when you take com- content that is 
so called simplified or basically uh, uh, put down in a simple way so that pe- more people can consume it a lot of people keep it as their last Stepping page of stone. research yeah. Yeah. but for the few that who actually have uh, who use this as content discovery mm. right i'm discovering a new mm. area of thinking and then getting into it yeah. that is actually something that actually can encourage more depth among a lot more people So yeah, that, so we are reels to the ship of the yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will take that. No, but, but the point is that's no, why you I, need people. I, I, I can really read this. There is there's a direct funnel in funneling in of intent, right? Um, yeah. One is I'm not saying that all content should be heavy. Yeah. yeah. There there needs to be there need to be things that open the door to new topics. But hmm. uh, a lot of time, what media producers end up doing, and yeah. by yeah. producers that's I mean the the gatekeepers of industries. is they the conversation stops there that is it yeah. there is no next yeah. step to it this is yeah. simple content Let, let's make simple content let's move on hmm. uh there has to be step two there has to be step three there has to be uh you have to really work with the audience and keep making up your content more and more profound for lack of a better yeah. term right. yeah uh yeah. now within so the cycle have, of uh, within the cycle of creating co- content that is easy to grasp and complex content I believe my skill set lies here. That's it. It hmm. lies at the latter end. That's when yeah. my that's why I can provide utility. I'm not saying yeah. that the other end of cycles are not important, but there yeah. needs to be upgrades. I'm not saying the second grade is not important, but you need to have a third, fourth, fifth going up to a PhD. Yeah, exactly. Zain, on that, uh, I actually uh, 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 it's interesting you say that. So I've had a theory for a while, and you kind of seem to be validating it, which is the more difficult something is to get into, the more hardcore people. who cross that bridge are likely to be and i'm seeing that for like in you know, like a lot of things it could be a game like yours i'm guessing people who cross that first bridge of shasan are likely to be lifelong fans and they're not likely to be fleeting fans of something like say ticket to ride or something like that or ludo for that yeah, matter I mean, and the same thing for other things like say books or like i'm a big fan of progressive metal for yeah, instance yeah, which is yeah. not the easiest of genres to get into but once you get into it is very difficult to then you're a fan like i can even think of any form of, like many people come can't get into amit verma's podcast because it is for us but those yeah. who do end and, up being super fans and, of it and, and on that like sapiens for example sapiens like once for, you once you yeah. read sapiens you are not like go, likely to go back to yeah, the exactly. old thinking yeah so is that so, is that something so, that you thought of resonates with like once you create something i'm just using the words that you did as well profound complex etc once you get people to cross that bridge there is no looking back then you are in this then you are you know uh, sort of going to be a fan of this forever and otherwise you would have dropped out somewhere during the journey and i completely agree with you and uh, and and the internet has allowed for people to have mm. varying levels of intent uh, for example mm. um, i am a high intent consumer when it comes to games uh, sure. to a point that i don't play triple a games i just can't get into them I play the indie games uh, on itch. io or on uh, on the ones I can find for cheaper on Humble Bundle, and I really really enjoy them because they they're doing something new. They're pushing the envelope. Uh, but when it comes to music, for for, uh, for example, I'm not necessarily high intent. So so modern consumers, especially modern ur- urban consumers, tend to be high intent in at least one or two media formats. Yeah. Uh, and I think the best way anyone has incentivized that behavior is Marvel. Marvel really made all the nerds who read comic books before they were cool <laughs> feel gratified yeah. uh, by the uh, by the, the knowledge by keep, keeping the small easter eggs where they could suddenly become the uh, become the cool hunters become the people who knew what was what was going to happen before everyone else mm-hmm. did and it keeps gratifying them by cre- by creating small easter eggs by creating shows that don't get the distribution as everyone else like every for I'll give you an example everyone who saw what if uh on disney plus on disney plus uh had a aha moment and a shareable moment when they saw one frame from the doctor strange trailer oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. the broken glass like, yeah. Like, yeah. i know this character yeah yeah um yeah no so and, and, and in that yeah so just on what you were mm-hmm. saying it's what this serves to do like you the marvel example is a brilliant one is what this serves to do is is kind of raise the overall level of uh, understanding of yeah. the overall universe so like the earlier knowing that a character called Do- dr strange exists was Itself, evidence yeah. of a nerd like that was what the baseline yeah. was 
Now no, you're looking at like some Easter eggs about some stuff deep inside, like some other universe yeah. or like that one frame that you're talking about. Is where mm-hmm. the real nerd is at. So they've raised kind of the yeah. baseline of because they're the common currency. It's spread so far, yeah. far and wide that everybody knows about the basic Marvel canon. Yeah, exactly. but the, the depth is in the this yeah. thing. What I really liked about what you said, Zainab, has nothing to do with the game as such, but that one line that you said. Everybody has one thing that they're deep into, yeah. or they should be into. Yeah. I think high anyone, intent, yeah, uh, high intent. I really like that line. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Tony, you have something? No, I think he was. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah, you were saying something, right? Yeah. yeah, I was saying, and 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 as marketer, as I'm also a, I'm also a producer, I'm also a, a, a creator, but I'm also a marketer. I I sell my own products. I I lead the mm-hmm. marketing within the company. Uh, I feel there's great merit in in making the high intent consumer feel seen. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really, really yeah. helping them, uh, helping them own the product because they are the ones who are going to become the mouthpieces for your product. And Shasim did that pick. Most of my sales are word of mouth where people go out uh, and my CAC is, is 7%, which is nothing, a customer acquisition cost. Uh, yeah. Which is basically people going out saying, hey, I played this game, you should definitely play it. And so you now, basically your game went viral. <laughs> basically. Yeah, the holy grail yeah, of what every viral, marketer is chasing. Yeah. It didn't go viral, but then I made them feel good by giving them more and more goodies. Yeah. I, uh, people who bought the first version of, version of Shasin are now getting an update deck for almost free ne- this year. Amazing. Yeah. The questions yeah. get updated. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm, it's coming at cost to me, but to them, I'm really, really, uh, there's so much value that's being added for helping yeah. them. No, yeah. And that, that would blew my mind. Like I was playing yeah. Shasin and there's a whole bunch of questions about COVID-19 response in there. Yeah. And that like <laughs> blew my mind about how current the game is. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and here, here's where Tony will ring his bell because I'm going to do the man, my mandatory Scott Galloway quote from in every simplified. He has this great line that says, uh, "People don't want more choices; they want more confidence in the choices that they do make." And I think something right. like what you're saying right now, which is such a it's it's not a margin for you, but it ends up making your customers feel so much happier, which then acts as yeah, it <laughs> reduces you should, you should add your uh, thousand true fans plug here again. My thousand true fans. I, mean, I have thousand true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you no, know, I guess you were talking about Kevin that uh, yeah, Kevin yeah. Kelly thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, no, that's. I'm pretty sure you've seen it, read it. Uh, Kevin Kelly's theory of uh, ten thousand true fans. Oh no, it was thousand true fans. Yeah. Which I don't have a plug. Please. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, like if you get uh, in the new creator economy, if you get yeah. thousand true fans, you can basically quit your job or create a sustainable business. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One is you said uh, your like uh, audience happens to be mostly in North America, Europe and India. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a physical board game, unlike, uh, you know, Zuckerberg who's sitting in Silicon Valley selling to us in India. I'm sure there are like distribution and logistics challenges, right? How does uh, that play out in the board games field? Uh, very, very painful. I can see that you're thinking of a board game about making board games already. <laughs> that look on your face like, yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah, very, very painfully. Um, there, uh, I have not like, I have not pondered over paper quality so much ever in my life as after I had made <laughs> uh, Logistical pipelines, uh, warehouses, what 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 ink is being used, Pantone shades, how much the freight costs are worldwide, all of it. Uh, and like to begin with, we couldn't launch a Kickstarter because we were from India. And Kickstarter doesn't oh, support wow. Indian projects simply because of legislation not being too clear. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I wanted to do a Kickstarter because the enthusiast community of tabletop games, yeah. uh, the hobbyists are on Kickstarter. That's, that's where new games get invented. And I couldn't do it because we are we were an Indian company. So I had to register a Delaware corporation to wow. launch the game. Uh, and now I filed taxes in the US. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> basically basically Shasan is a US game then. <laughs> Still. Taxes no, in the, Texas. The, the right is held in our in, in our company uh, head, uh, registered in Bombay. Oh, the okay. distribution Fair rights point. are then sold out to this US company. Ah, your US company. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. And the complexity so of the European and all of that. Yeah. 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 And then every six months the laws change. EU has new laws that kicked in last June. So I have to keep track of what laws are being moved in where before I can ship mm-hmm. a product. Uh, I had to, I kid you not, uh, 
a few months before I printed the game, I heard about another game being burnt in the factories of China. Oh, okay. Uh, simply because uh, it had the RPG game that also had Beijing as a location, and they, they and they didn't like that, so they waited for the copy oh. to get printed and then burn it. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. That's that that is hard. Level of evil, yeah. So wow. I'm not only worrying about censorship within India, I'm also worrying about censorship in other countries. <laughs> so now what we are doing is, if we find one country censoring, it might censor our content. That one component gets manufactured somewhere else. Everything else gets manufactured in the in the original in another country, wow. and then they assemble in a third country. <laughs> Just to give a sense, where all is what's the geographic reach of your supply chain? <laughs> Oh, wow, that's a nerdy sentence. India, so China, much. US. <laughs> wow, yeah. of course, yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is actually like I think we should do an episode in just on, on the like how the, the, on the logistics <laughs> of creating board games. No, I, I want to see a board yeah. game on making board games. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the, I'm sure there's one. You know, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's one. Like we are right now making a board game that Mayurish Pradkar started to work on actually today. Mayurish Pradkar was one of the uh, key uh, designers on Shasen. Uh, in charge of the production pipeline, but also in charge of balancing the math of the game, and they are, and he's making a game called Mumbai 1995. Okay, wow. Uh, which is basically Mumbai in the calm after the storm. So oh. the early 90s uh. was was tumultuous for Mumbai in, in many ways, uh, politically, crime wise, uh, stock markets were going up and down. Yeah, uh, and we are in 95, and the game basically. Makes each person a different stakeholder in the game, so okay. everyone's not playing the. Everyone doesn't have the same objective. Everyone has a different objective, and they're trying to maximize the objective, uh, while collaborating or plotting against each other. And at the end, the game goes on for like over a period of ten years within the game, not in real life. Uh, and <laughs> over the ten, <laughs> over those ten years, uh, Mumbai could end up in the darkest timeline because of your actions, or be in the same position it is in right now. Or in a better space, and that's up to you. You basically play the power brokers of Bombay. So wow, again, that's... supply chains, logistics, history, alternate history. We are we are delving with all of this within the games we make. <laughs> wow, it's it's good to play these on board games rather than in the world's greatest democracy, <laughs> which is not <laughs> happening right now currently. Yeah, <laughs> but some people um, do that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know who. theoretically yeah. no, theoretically, yeah. theoretically, yeah. theoretically yeah. The, the, they're only the centrists season finale, <laughs> the season finale of the reality show of which is American politics the Trump era the season finale was was I don't want that to happen in India yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is oh, people storming the parliament <laughs> yeah so uh, I mean in the interest of uh, time and maybe just to round up yeah. uh, one question that I had was you mentioned Gadfly uh, which is you know the label for the board games, mm. and we mentioned uh, you know podcast favorite Yuval Noah Harari, who refers to you know terrorists as the bee gadfly yeah. that buzzes in the yeah. ear of the bull to actually cause the damage. So it's not the terrorist causing mm. the damage. Uh, but mm. my question was, you know, when you named it as gadfly, and when you've created these board games, is there an intended effect that you want to have on the people who are playing the game beyond creating the performance out of the game itself, or is that just left as an open-ended thing. A lot of people are making games about things that are that are easily digestible. We, at least in the first phase, are trying to make games which are which are topics that people haven't touched, that mm. people should be touching, and might be slightly uncomfortable. Uh, my next outing as a solo designer is something called Zikr, which is a game about building your own religion, and I'm certain <laughs> a lot of People won't like that, including my own family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you better build. You better print that whole thing inside your own house. <laughs> it's not getting printed anywhere. <laughs> well, China is doesn't uh, uh, condone fair, religion. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, well, that works out for me. You know, <laughs> that works out. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, yeah, uh, but distributing fair, yeah. India might be an issue. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, answer your question uh, again. I'm going to quote uh, and. A paraphrase from uh, Buckminster Fuller's uh, Operation Manual for Spaceship Earth: When you want to move a ship, uh, you don't you don't push the ship. At the end of the rudder of the ship is a small piece of metal. Uh, it's called the trim tab. If a trim tab moves, it make it moves the whole ship with it. 
so if you really want people to uh, to change or reconsider their ways of thinking don't push the ship be the trim tab wow wow <laughs> be wow. the trim tab be that, the I, trim yeah. tab yeah yeah that, that that's magnificent that's... No, i mean i have one last way it's not a question really it's just a comment on something i was thinking about throughout so one thing i'm constantly fascinated by as i observe how media itself changes is while we live in what is without doubt like a extremely digital age where everything that we're doing including this podcast recording um is digital and all that it it constantly fascinates me how there is always a counter culture of the physical yeah. like in this mm-hmm. day and age where every single song that has ever been recorded is easily available to us almost for free vinyl mm-hmm. sales are increasing like almost 100% year on year uh, just recently i read about how tiktok strangely enough has caused the rise of physical books in the us to <laughs> yeah. so like ever been 30% wow. year wow. on year or something like that and yeah exactly right and i find it and the reason for all this is disconnection right yeah. and mm-hmm. i feel it too when i'm on spotify there's always this temptation to open a tab see what's on twitter or chat with one of you guys or something of that sort yeah. whereas mm-hmm. friends who have a vinyl record they just switch off everything disconnect from the internet and just enjoy the music completely and i think something like board games actually just it seems very counterintuitive at one level but it also so much makes sense where is exactly what you said there's so much free screen fatigue that we want to disconnect almost like if you can't maintain that balance in real life then let there be extremes let there be screen time for half the day and then complete disconnection for half uh, half the day it's not a com- it's not a, a question really but it's just an observation like i've yeah. always been thinking about this you know they always say we have short attention spans but at the same time we are reading more long form articles than ever before so yeah i think and it was just a I have time yeah. for four hour podcasts yeah, right? yeah exa- exactly right exactly <laughs> so yeah uh, Uh, like yeah exactly and amit himself is fond of saying we are not a generation that uh, is uh, we prefer uh, we don't want shallowness and a lot of options we want a few options and depth, depth in those in i think uh, so i think and, all this and that back. circles back to the high intent point yeah, as well yeah yeah i think we yeah. circled back on everything like yeah. a good <laughs> good like a good last slide of a ppt sriket and i will be happy only once we eventually make a board game that is based on microsoft powerpoint i think yeah. but uh, yeah yeah i mean I, I, you I, you'll I, be happy to know that most games no, no, no. video games are made on excel I'm here on Excel. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. That, yeah. that doesn't surprise that me. Sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure like there will be some pretty pretty nice uh, pivot Excel's charts. Fine. Excel's fine. Excel's fine. Excel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. And yeah. So uh, and actually the the the, the high intent point actually also brings me back to one of my favorite segments on one of on my favorite TV show of all time which I'm sure you must have seen being a political enthusiast as well the West Wing. And on the West Wing there is a um, so the they they are preparing for the presidential debates uh, mm-hmm. the president and his opponent and the incumbent president is the protagonist and uh, they the the his team keeps coaching him on uh, every issue that comes up there's an eight word answer that needs to go for it right so if that's that eight word answer is the buzzword for that every wow. answer needs to be given in eight words and then you you give the first eight words and then you expound on it mm. right so he's like prepping on all the eight words and he hates it because he's like i he's a professor by this thing and he's like i don't like this eight word answers and when he finally gets on the stage with the debate and his opponents a very uh, charismatic classic republican who who has who has like the snappy answers yeah. but no depth really and he says and the point that he says to him is uh at one point he's like a political this thing the eight word answer is everything on this particular question you gave the eight words right give me eight words after that and i'll let you i'll, I'll say that you won this question give me eight words after that i'll drop out of the race and wow. that guy's just quiet <laughs> so the whole point is and the the point that he's making with the whole thing is that there is that depth is vilified so much in yeah. today's day and age that na- that that uh, people are always talking about you know what if it's not simple enough it's not good enough yeah. right but actually sometimes it the 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 real beauty of things comes at the 24th word and not the 8th word wow right. 24th word that's very deep <laughs> yeah that, that's deep. yeah yeah that's deep yeah, yeah. so the anyway, anyway, so study that was fun. of presidential vocabularies through the ages yeah and how the president as presidents are speaking at a fifth grade level right now when they were speaking at a high school grade level uh, mm. pre world war 2 
Oh wow. Yeah, well uh, <laughs> we know where the graph dropped. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we know where that graph really <laughs> dropped. But anyway, Shreyas, this has been fantastic. Yeah, we've we've had a great time speaking to yeah. you. We've uh, we well, we've covered everything. I we genuinely thought we'd be. I thought we'd be speaking about board games, but we've covered like yeah, philosophy yeah, we, and yeah, yeah. supply chain supply and supply chain and, and the <laughs> interesting prospect of a potential game called We Look Up, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a dating game. <laughs> hey, uh, so quick. Uh, question slash plug if we need to consume the content that you've created yeah like oh, specifically yeah, yeah. shasan azadi since that's the yes. most imminent launch i'm assuming yes. where the, where does one go about trying to get ha- get their hands on this so azadi hasn't shipped yet it's not complete yet uh, shasan uh, is available right now in india it's shasanthegame.com or on amazon that's s h a s n uh sometimes like i i named it the file that i want to make it look better I literally yeah. go on to a font website and type the brand names out to see if they look good. Uh, so Shasan is S H A S N. Uh, there's no extra A over there. So or you were being pressing it one day; it'll be in a word. In a word is compatible. Yeah, <laughs> a word is compatible. <laughs> but go um, on. <laughs> but uh, uh, and again, Ship of Thieves and Insignificant Man are available for free on YouTube. And OK Computer by Pooja Shetty and Neil Pagidar, which I executive produced, is on Hotstar. And Hulu in the US. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we, do, we, yeah, do. we have we have a significant yeah, US listenership yeah, as well, so we shouldn't ignore them completely. Significant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, this has been amazing. Zen. Uh, yeah. Uh, this has been amazing. Zen. Thanks. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so, so much. much for this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, normally we have Naren who signs yeah. us off. With, I, like, uh, there are so many. I've just been thinking how do yeah. we end this. So Zen, just just if you haven't heard the show before, we always end with stay safe, stay something, stay simplified. Stay and, something that's related to yeah. the episode. I mean, I, I've right. been thinking of so many. Stay safe, stay deep, stay simplified is okay. one thing. But I want just to say, what is that part of the ship that you said that you you that trim, trim, trim tab. tab. Yeah. yeah, so stay safe, stay a trim tab. <laughs> oh, nice. And stay simplified. Stay simplified. Yeah. Fantastic. It's been great, Zin. See you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye bye. Hello, 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 hello. It's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Raw and Organic, Kunal talks to Shivjit Gatke and Zaheer Khan about how they came up with Step Set Go, a bootstrap startup. On Khil Niti, friend of the network Saurabh Pant joins Raji Mishra, Ayaz Memon and Sabah Kareem to preview the India vs Sri Lanka series. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam speaks to Ram Iyer. He is the founder and CEO of the Vyan Network. They discuss how trade finance works for local shops and SMEs. What is an oblate spheroid? The simplified hosts deconstruct the American football game and all there is to it. And on the Filter Coffee podcast, Karthik is in conversation with the Delhi High Court advocate Rohan Alva. They talk about his book, Liberty After Freedom, a history of Article 21, due process and the Constitution of India. Do follow us on social media where IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. It really helps us. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms that you're listening to. And also remember, you can check us out on YouTube at www.ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Bank of Baroda and HDFC Life Insurance. Thank you so much for making this possible. We know you love fast food. Fast fashion. Faster payment. Lightning fast internet speed. Then why not fast information? On Think Fast where we discuss the latest developments in the world of technology, business, marketing, pop culture. With a side of sarcasm and my dad jokes or just mine. Not mine but on my jokes are funny. So join me guys the funnier one Suchita Salwan co-founder of LBB and me Varun Dugal the co-founder of the Glitch as we think fast only on the IBM network. Fresh episodes out every Monday on the IBM app website or wherever you get your podcast from.